Qigong and dancing. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. From time to time when I'm teaching Qigong, um, I'll get people making comments along the lines of how doing the Qigong movements reminds them of dancing. Um, or how maybe you could use the qigong movements as dance moves, some of them. Or I've even had people ask me or suggest, hey, maybe you could do like a qigong dancing course or something like that, which is an interesting idea. Um, and it ties in quite well, in fact, with the early origins of qigong. Um, I may have mentioned this somewhere in a, in a vlog before. I, I often certainly mention it when talking about the history of qigong where, of course, Qigong is thousands of years old. Um, the earliest archaeological evidence is between five and 8,000 years old. So, you know, it goes back quite some time. And, you know, maybe before that, that's the first evidence that we have of these types of practices. And so it's so ancient, so old, that um, we don't really know exactly where it came from. You know, along the way, different things have been recorded, and we know you know, some aspects of how it developed along the way, but there's no sort of one starting point that we can go, this person started doing Qigong. What seems most likely, uh, and, and in terms of the stories about how practices developed, is that it did actually come from dancing. Um, specifically in the Neolithic period, so quite early human history, when people were living very simple lives, and they'd go out and work hard all day, and um, in, in China that often meant, you know, working in damp conditions, you know, rice paddies, and getting soaking wet, physically tired, and then coming home as it starts to get cold. <laughs> so cold, tired, and wet, that was a good recipe for um, aches and pains in the body and various types of illnesses. And so what they discovered was if they came home like that and just went straight to rest, they were more likely to get various aches and illnesses than if they came home and they danced first before they rested. And of course, the type of dancing that they did was shamanic dancing back in that period, copying things from nature, whether that be animals or elemental forces, trees and the clouds and you know all of this sort of thing. Um, and, and so they, they did these dances and they found out, hey, if we dance, this actually helps to keep us well. And then little by little, as they refined their understanding, they paid attention, hey, dancing in this way helps with this particular type of problem. Dancing in another way helps with another type of problem. You know, if I dance like a tiger, it has this effect. If I dance like a bird, it has this effect. And they refined their understanding of that and they became much more aware of what it was doing within themselves, within their body, within the energy. Until eventually it became this very refined, very sophisticated uh, system of understanding how our energy flows within our body and how we can work with it. So you go right back to those early roots and yeah, of course it makes sense that Qigong now, even now, even though it's developed in so many ways, would be reminiscent of dancing or, or certainly bear those, those traces of its roots within it. And... I guess as, as, as part of that, there are actually some specific Qigong dancing forms that I'm aware of where they are specifically practiced as a dance, a sort of a codified dance where you do different movements with different rhythms to generate and uh, stimulate the energy in different ways. And yeah, certainly you could bring Qigong movements, use them as dance moves, or I think Probably more fundamental than that is rather than necessarily using specific movements, you know, this awareness of energy and how it works, I wouldn't say it necessarily specifically came out of dancing, I think there was an awareness of that anyway, but it became developed and refined through, through dancing and this created inspiration and impetus to explore it in different ways. I think there's potential to go the other way and bring awareness of energy and then bring that into dance uh, and to yes so so rather than dancing without awareness of energy bring a strong awareness of energy into the dancing 
and let that influence and inspire your dance and, and potentially bring some different benefits to dancing than just dancing without that awareness. So I do think that's an interesting thing or interesting potential to explore. And so as part of that, because I dancing hasn't played a very big role in my life. I've danced, of course, everyone, I think most people dance at some point, you know, at one point I did some ballroom dancing and I've done some salsa and yeah, salsa dancing, some, I've done some tango at one point, and, you know, just, but, but just bits and pieces, like it hasn't really been a big part of my life. So recently though, I've been doing more dancing. This may come as a surprise to some people. <laughs> I don't know. Some people might think I'm the sort of person who does a lot of dancing and other people might think, well, really, he dances? Yeah. So I've been doing more dancing lately and exploring some different, um, some different types of dancing where there's an implied connection to awareness of our energy. It's often not necessarily uh, particularly overt, but it's sort of touched on within uh, the intention or the approach of, of the dancing. Um, and so there's, there's a few different things I've just been exploring. I, I, I guess, in a way, doing a little bit of research into this aspect of Qigong practice, of its early roots, and exploring that a little bit in a way to, you know, sometimes we can gain inspiration, insights in lots of different ways by looking more broadly at something. We can, we can, we can get different perspectives on it. And so, yeah, that's been a big part of why I've been exploring this as well as, you know, to have some fun. It's an enjoyable thing to do. And so one of those types of dancing that I've been doing is called ecstatic dance. Uh, and this is an interesting type of dancing. And I've actually, um, been getting into it a little bit, so much so actually that I did a, um, earlier this year, I did a course to learn to become a DJ for ecstatic dance, and I've been DJing for some ecstatic dances as well, which has been quite fun. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about exactly what ecstatic dance is, or other than to say, from my understanding of it, my impression of it, it really is uh, uh, quite a primal type of dancing it's very simple it, it's a free form type of dancing uh, and and it really is sort of connecting to that you know very simple urge or process of, of moving with rhythm and it does have this implied connection to working with our energy uh, as part of that and so the reason I'm not going to talk too much about exactly what ecstatic dance is is because my next podcast guest, which the video and the audio for that is going to be released um, towards the end of this week, in a few days, I'm interviewing someone who has been DJing for ecstatic dances and running ecstatic dances for a number of years. And so we'll talk a lot more about that in that interview. I've, I've also um, got another interview with someone else coming up who's been doing another very different type of dance. Uh, but again, bringing this intentional purpose and working with your energy to dancing as well. So at the moment, I'm just having some fun with it, um, but that may lead to other things in the future. And I thought maybe this was an interesting topic to talk about a little bit, the connection between Qigong and dancing and the, I guess the potential that is there, the, as I said, there already are some specific types of Qigong that are practiced as a dance, but it's certainly something that could you could do a lot more of. And, you know, if you're already practicing Qigong, there's no reason why you can't just simply start exploring and playing with this and bringing that awareness of your energy into dancing. Uh, maybe try dancing with, uh, you, 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 well, maybe try doing some of your qigong movements as dance moves when you dance. Uh, maybe try exploring using different music uh, when you're doing qigong to turn it into more of a dance. Now I've talked about using music with qigong elsewhere um, and often it's not always desirable to, to, do, to use music um, because what happens when we use music is, well we become guided by the music, right? And that can be a useful thing. Sometimes, yeah, let the music guide us. That can be a really useful, beneficial thing. But if we always rely on that music, we tend to, or we can tend to, well, become reliant on it. And that can take our focus away from 
you could consider it our own internal music the the music the rhythms of life that we have within us and and we we can then rely too much on that external stimulus rather than connecting to what's happening within us and with the nature around us so there is a balance to be found there um, i think it's very beneficial to practice without music um, a good portion of the time so that you're really connecting to what's going on inside you in a deeper way uh, and as well as your environment well you, around you but also it can be really valuable to use that external stimulus of music as a way to guide you to create certain energies and rhythms uh, as, as you practice as well so it's a fun thing to explore too um, there's either another vlog about that or um, uh, an article um, I've written at some point so I'll put a link to that below as well so anyway, that's that's one of the things I've been doing lately, and and maybe this this vlog will give you some inspiration to maybe explore dancing with your qigong a little bit, explore that a little bit, and it's something I'm continuing to explore again, researching, I guess you could say, in a sense, um, at the moment, uh, which may lead to other things in the future. One of the things I'm, if, if I think about, it, I'm I'm constantly researching in one way or another. Sometimes that means going to to different places to to find historical traces of different things sometimes it means talking to different people sometimes it means um, reading you know different books different sources and sometimes it means trying completely different things as a way to bring a further perspective to what I do uh, with with the qigong that I practice for myself and, and of course you know ultimately that then influences what I teach as well so anyway, hopefully that gives you some food for thought. If you've enjoyed the vlog, please like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things. And again, as I mentioned, um, got a couple of interviews coming up on the podcast. One this week and then another one that'll probably be a couple of weeks after that that are about some different types of dance that you might like to tune into and listen to those interviews as well. All right, I look forward to catching you on the next one.